In the last few lectures, we had been looking at the single equation methods of solving the simultaneous equation parameters. What we will be looking at today is the system method of solving the simultaneous equation model. Now, in this case, we will be looking at all the equations simultaneously. So, unlike before, we will not be looking at them individually, we will consider all the equations together and of course, there will be certain conditions under which we can do that. Primarily, we will be looking at two different methods. We will be discussing the three stage list squares in great detail and we will also be giving an outline of the full information maximum likelihood method, which is also popular, but a little bit more complicated to work with. So, we will be looking at the system methods for solving simultaneous equation models in today's lecture. We will discuss the three stage list squares. Now, the three stage list squares is a technique as we said, which estimates the parameters of the whole system simultaneously, which means that we will be looking at all the equations together. Unlike in the previous methods, where we had been looking at single equations, in this case, we will be looking at all the equations simultaneously. So, what is the advantage of this? Of course, there is a disadvantage, we would have to, it becomes more complicated if you look at all the systems simultaneously, but the advantage is that now you can take the correlations between the equations into account. So, remember that all the equations, you had this errors and when you look at them together, this errors are correlated, we have seen this before. So, if you take account of this correlation, then obviously, you are going to get better estimates of the parameters. Single equation methods do not take account of this correlation and hence loses out on some information. Now, the only problem with the three stage list squares besides the computation difficulties is that it is only applicable when all the equations are identified. It is not necessary that they have to be exactly identified, they can be also over identified, but in the single equation methods, suppose out of the g equations, say two of them are not identified, then we could have used single equation methods for g minus 2 of the identified equations and got the parameter estimates. In this case, however, you need to have all the g equations identified. Let us look at the model first. So, as before we had the single equation, the j -th equation as y j is equal to y j prime beta j star plus h k prime gamma j star plus u j. We will simplify this a little bit and write this as z j prime delta j plus u j. So, what is z j? z j is y j and x j. So, this becomes now a z j prime becomes now a n by g j plus k j minus 1 matrix, whereas delta j becomes a vector of g j plus k j minus 1 dimension, where we have g j minus 1 beta j stars and k j gamma j stars. So, we take all the parameters together into delta j, we take all the endogenous and exogenous explanatory variables together into the z and write the j -th equation as y j equal to z j prime delta j plus u j. We will call this equation 1. Now, if we pull all the g equations, because we are going to estimate all the parameters delta j together. So, if you pull all the g equations together, then we get something like this y 1, y 2, y g and we have the corresponding z's. So, if you write the z's diagonally and then multiply by a vector of deltas, then you can see that each of the rows actually would give you one of the equations. The first row would lead to the first equation y 1 z 1 delta 1 plus u 1 
the second would be the y 2 equal to z 2 delta 2 plus e 2 etcetera. So, we can pull this up together into one single big equation and we write this as y is equal to z delta plus u. y consists of y 1, y 2 and up to y g and you have z which is a n g by summation g equal to 1 to j g small g j plus k j minus 1 matrix. So, remember that each of the z's were n by g j plus k j minus 1 matrices and now you are summing this up for all g and therefore, you have n g by this sum as the dimension of the matrix of z. Similarly, delta becomes the sum of the dimensions of each of the delta j's which is summation over j equal to 1 to g g j plus k j minus 1. So, we can put the pooled matrix and vectors as y equal to z delta plus u and we will call this equation 2. What is the expectation of u here? Expectation u obviously is the expectation of the individual u's which is 0 and hence it still remains as 0. What about the dispersion? If you have expectation of u u prime as sigma, then the dispersion of u becomes sigma Kronecker product i n, because you have n independent observations and each time the set of u 1, u 2, u j have the same covariance matrix sigma. So, this comes out as sigma Kronecker product i n. Now, the problem with applying the OLS on 2 is that z contains the endogenous variables besides the exogenous variables. So, if you have the endogenous variables in z, then z is going to be correlated with u. So, we cannot directly apply the list squares here, we have z and u correlated. So, we need to take recourse of some other way. We have in the two stage least square or the indirect least square method, we have seen that we can use the instrumental variable technique. We use something like that here also. So, we pre multiply 2 by the g k by g n matrix i g cross x and this leads us to the equation 3, which is equation 2 pre multiplied by i g cross x. Now, what happens is we have the dispersion changed. So, dispersion becomes sigma cross x x prime. So, we have 3 with a dispersion which is not identity. So, we again cannot use the ILS, we need to take recourse of the GLS estimator. So, if you use the GLS estimator on 3, then delta star comes out to be something like this. This looks pretty complicated but it can be slightly simplified to get this form. So, this would be the estimator for delta, but there is one small problem here, but before I come to that, let us go back and look at what we did. In 3, we used an instrument i g cross x. So, we did not multiply y or the equation by z and then solve for it. i g cross x, if you look at the third term, or the second term on the right hand side of 3, you will see that this is the error term and x and u are uncorrelated. So, this would be going to 0. So, if you use the instrument i g cross x, you can circumvent the problem of z and u being correlated. But then the other problem that comes in is that the dispersion now is not an identity matrix. Therefore, we apply the GLS and we land up with the estimator. Why cannot we use 4 as the estimator? Because sigmas would generally be unknown. So, the right hand side involves sigma and until and unless you know the sigmas, you cannot use delta star. So, what we do here? We have to estimate the sigma. How do you estimate the sigmas? This can be done very simply from the two stage list square. So, let us go back to the j -th equation and the j -th equation parameters are delta j hat which is beta j hat and gamma j hat. And if we estimate this parameters by the two stage list square, we can get the j -th equation residuals as E j is y j minus z j delta j hat. 
So, these are the residuals that you compute from the two stage list squares. Now, if you get the EJs from the jth equation, you can get all these EJs from the other equations as well. So, we have E 1, E 2 up to E g from all the G equations and then we can estimate the sigma j k's that is the correlation between uh, the covariance between the j th and the k th equation errors and estimate of that would be the residual for the j th equation prime, the residual for the k th equation divided by the square root of the respective degrees of freedom. So, we get an estimate of the sigma j k hat and then we get sigma hat as the matrix which is formed by the sigma j k hat. Of course, the diagonals would be the variances which would be sigma j j hats which would be the square of the residuals divided by the degrees of freedom as usual. Now, once we substitute this sigma hat in the CSLS estimator that is in 4, we get delta hat as z prime sigma hat inverse cross x prime x x prime inverse x into z whole thing inverse into z prime sigma hat inverse cross x prime x x prime inverse x into y. Now, you see everything on the right hand side is estimated. This is the three stage least square estimate. Now, very quickly why we call it the three stage least square? Remember that we did actually one single least square that was a generalized least square to get delta star. So, that is one least square. Where are the other two? The other two comes from the two stage least squares that we did to get sigma hat. So, two of the stages actually goes into getting sigma hat and the third one is simply using that sigma hat we do a single GLS estimator and we get the three stage least square estimator. What is the comparison between the three stage and the two stage least square? We use the two stage to get to the three stage, but why should you do that? What advantage do you get and when would the two become similar? The three stage least square reduces to the two stage least square under two conditions. The first is if sigma is equal to i g that is if the disturbances are uncorrelated. Obviously, if the disturbances are uncorrelated, you need not take them simultaneously, you can treat them separately. So, if sigma is equal to i j, treat the g equation separately, you can do the two stage least square, it will be the same as the three square least square. An interesting result is that if all the g equations are exactly identified, then also the three stage least square actually reduces to the two stage least square. This is because if you look at the condition of exact identifiability, then we have k minus k j is equal to g j minus 1, that is k is equal to g j plus k j minus 1, which means that z and x prime are of the same dimension, which is n by k. Mind you, x prime was n by k, but z was n by g j plus k j minus 1 summed up. So, now this becomes the same and hence you can take z x prime together, take the inverses and those cancels out simplifies and the three stage least squares actually reduces to the two stage least squares. So, obviously, the three stage least squares is better because if all the equations are not identified, you get a different estimator and particularly the first condition if the disturbances are correlated then you take account of that correlation in the three stage least square, which you do not in case of the two stage least squares. An alternative to the three stage least squares is the full information maximum likelihood. In short, we call it the FIML. Now, you have the model y is equal to z delta plus u. This is the full model that we have. Now, if you look at the error here, you assume this time obviously, you are doing a maximum likelihood method. So, you need to have a distributional form of the error. We assume that the error is normal which means 0 and the variance sigma cross i n which is the 
dispersion of u that we have already seen. So, the additionally we assume that it has a normal distribution. Now, if we assume a normal distribution, then the likelihood can be written as in terms of delta and sigma as L delta sigma is of this form and you can solve this likelihood to get the estimates of the parameters delta and beta and the f i m l gives you the log likelihood in this form. Mind you, there is a b comes in because when you go from u to the distribution of y, b y plus gamma x was equal to u. Therefore, there would be a the Jacobian would give you a determinant of b as a Jacobian and that would come into the model as well. So, the parameters b would be involved, it would be involved both in delta as well as in b itself. So, delta consists of the b's also. So, this will be a much more complicated model to look at because the there will be a several parameters involved in several of this term. So, the score vector in this case will not lead to a simple solution and hence you need to use some iterative method like the newton rapson or the method of scoring to solve for the f i m l estimators of delta and sigma that can be done. As for comparison, the system methods are more efficient obviously, because they take account of the correlations among the disturbances. So, they are more, uh, more informative in a sense than the single equation methods. However, they are much more difficult to compute, because it takes a you saw in the 3 Stanley squares basically it is one step GLS, but you needed to do the whole of the 2 SLS, so that you can plug the 2 SLS in as sigma hat from the residuals of the 2 SLS and then you could do the 3 SLS. FIML on the other hand is also difficult, because the likelihood function involves both b separately as well as the endogenous coefficients in the deltas. So, this is going to be much more computationally difficult. So, also the 3 SLS of the FIML cannot be applied until all the equations are identified. So, you need to have the whole system identified be before you can think of the estimation of the simultaneous equation model as a whole. So, generally the most preferred method is the 2 SLS, although if possible the 3 SLS gives you the better results. If you have all the equations identified, the 3 SLS would be recommended. In most cases the preferred method is the 2 SLS. In today's lecture we discuss the 3 stage least square method and the full information maximum likely method for solving the simultaneous equation model parameters. These are system methods unlike the ILS or the 2 SLS or the LIML and the LVR, which are single equation methods. As for comparison, we have seen that obviously, the system methods would be better. However, the system methods can only work if all the equations are exactly or over identified. Otherwise, we will have to take recourse to only those equations which are identified and hence we will have to go back to the single equation method. All in all, if the three stage list squares if possible is probably the best method that we can use, but in most cases if all the equations are not identified, the two stage list square is used. This is as far as we will go with the estimation of the simultaneous equation models.